I want to, first of all, welcome Sandeep Singh. Thank you for taking time out. I know it's late in India, so thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Vishwajit. Thanks for inviting me. So I want, to, I want to start by asking you, Sandeep, I know you've been reporting since November that I know of from the, from the Morcha and the movement. Why, very quickly, why did you feel the need that you needed to be part, sort of report as an independent journalist uh, for this movement? So, Bishwaji, I am a Punjabi, so I am connected to the land. My family is into farming. So, I knew that I need to do something. As you know, national media is completely biased. They usually label farmers as terrorists, militants. They used to do this to Muslims. I knew that this, they would do the same thing to the farmers. So, that's why I thought that I need to be there. So, that's why I am covering the farmers. I am following them wherever they are going. They are, put, they are protesting and Delhi's different borders, and now they're holding rallies in different areas of Punjab, Haryana, UP, and Rajasthan. And yeah, and I've noticed. Yeah, and I've noticed. I know today, you know, you've been reporting from uh, Punjab, and I've seen you've been you've been all over. You, you know, from uh, borders of Delhi to uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana. So, so thank you for for that reporting because that is how a lot of us are finding out things that are happening on the ground. So let me let me ask you this. Um, we're hearing obviously from many different sources, especially including you as well, why farmers are doing this morcha, right? And we've heard a few arguments, we, but because you are so close to the farmers, you've spoken to a lot of them. What are you hearing from farmers since September, October, November, the bitch, and, and, and now, why are they, you know, they've been there for months now and they're willing to be there for many more months. Why are farmers, how are they articulating in Punjabi and Hindi and English saying, this is why, this is, this is why we're so far away from home and we want to keep doing this. Farmers are saying that they want repeal of three farm laws and they want MSP guarantee of minimum support price. That's their only demand. They are saying that these laws will are death warrant of the, them, that they are dangerous and they are not good for them. And th they are fearing that the corporates would take over agriculture sector, they will control the food, food chain, they will, the government will not buy the, their crops. So farmers, fate of farmers will be in the hands of corporates. They will decide the price. They will decide everything. So, you know, one of the interesting things about this is um, I, you know, farmers, they're one of the most hardest working uh, laborers anywhere around the planet. They know the land really well. They feed the entire nation of India. They feed the entire globe every day. One of the arguments that people have used, including politicians, but even normal day-to-day -day Indians saying farmers don't know what's in these laws, they don't know what's best for them. How do you, of course, I, I, I see that there is some of this is propaganda, but how do you respond to somebody who says, you know what, farmers, they're not educated maybe, they don't know what's in these laws. So farmers know about these laws much better than these, some of these economists who are being funded by the corporates or the supporters of Bharti Janta Party. The farmers know that these laws are dangerous as they will pave the clear the path for corporates to take over the land because when the government stops the buying the their crops at MSP, maybe they are saying farmers are saying that government will do this. As government has a, a committee was set up by Modi government, which recommended that they had recommended about PDS system, public distribution system. They're saying that government will start procuring less and then which will hit the farmers. Now government is procuring wheat and rice from mostly from Punjab and Haryana's farmers. They're 80 to 90 percent wheat and paddy is procured at MSP. So but they are afraid that if government, if government beacons this MSP, the PDS system, if government beacons this Monday system, APMC, Agriculture Produce Market Committee, and if it allows parallel private markets to run without paying tax, then initially the corporates will pay extra money. They will pay better price to the farmers. The farmers will start going to the private market. So then the government will say that, oh, now we need to pack it up because the farmers are going in private markets. Then government will stop procuring at MSP. 
then the corporates will corporates will have a free hand to explore the farmers because farmers do not have any other option yeah because government would have packed it up by then so you know you you are you know you come from that land you're talking to farmers they're explaining this to you because they live this every day do you so one of the things that's also happening since the beginning of this andolan is there's a certain narrative that is being projected in the indian media as to what the reality is and do you see presence of mainstream media on the ground talking to farmers trying to get their part of the story have you seen that in october november december january february are you have have they come in to really try to talk to the farmers so initially when farmers started protesting at delhi's different borders national media used to come to the border area but they used to come and they used to ask very stupid questions like about khalistan bhindra wale they never talk about the farm laws they never talk about those laws all they try to do was propaganda even now they, most of them don't come to the protest side because the farmers used to uh, raise slogans against national media because they say they say that national media is anti farmers is a pro corporate is a pro modi government so now what happened that few days ago a three reporters from a indian private news channel they came and they, they was they were planning to shoot videos and take pictures from the areas where there were no farmers they were they wanted to show that that farmers have left singhu border that is a completely empty place that there are no more farmers protesting against the new farm laws so that's what they are trying to do they are trying to do a particular agenda they are not trying to show the fair picture to complete picture of the they don't want to show the ground reality so that's the problem with the national media and so unfortunately a lot of indians are consuming the national media so they're not sort of capturing they're not getting to hear that part of the story and which is where the work of independent journalists like yourself comes in really handy there was a tweet i you know i've been following your feed for months now you're you know one of the few sort of sources from the ground there was a tweet you had a few days after january 26th india's republic day you had a photo uh, of a couple of farmers and you basically talked about how before 26 january security forces used to talk to farmers sometimes they would sit together have have tea and i've seen photos and videos like that but after january 26 something changed uh when the morcha went into delhi there was a little bit of scuffles and violence and um that got reported and it just became center stage but what caught my attention was after that you reported security forces and farmers they're not talking to each other they might be standing very close to each other so talk a little bit about what's what's going on um uh before and after 26 that has led to that sort of that separation of soldiers talking to farmers so before 26th of january the borders were the, the police had installed the barricades but borders were not completely sealed so policemen and paramilitary personnel they used to come towards the farmer side and farmer used to go towards their side and they used to go and talk and crack a joke and on on lodi i also on the occasion of lodi the farmers and the paramilitary personnel they were eating ground nuts together and those ravdis and those gachak all those things and they were sitting around a fire together all of them were there but after 26 january those borders have been completely sealed now they, they have brought this forward buyer and at some places they have even <clears throat> built a concrete wall of 4 to 5 feet so now the paramilitary personnel they don't come towards the farmer side and farmers can't go towards their side so i think is is a when they were intermingling of the farmers and policemen paramilitary personnel so they had this trust of that oh they will not harm us yeah. even paramilitary personnel had that perception and the farmers too had that perception ye apne log hain these are our people they are just farmers like us i think those that wall was not only formed to build to stop the farmers but it was all so built to build perception in the minds of the paramilitary personnel that these people are not your own don't let them come to your territory don't let them to come towards your side so that's not a fair thing if they were intermingling i think things would have been much better now those things have been 
those borders have been completely sealed. Yeah, and I think yeah, and which is an unfortunate thing that they have not only they did not only built a wall on the road; they also also built a wall in the they also built a wall in the minds of the paramilitary personals and police personals. Yeah, and I th I think yeah, that is the unfortunate thing that you at least had security forces farmers respecting each other's why you have to do your job and why you have to protest. I understand that they were talking to each other. Un unfortunately, that is- Yeah, Vishwaji, uh, uh, let me tell you a little story. So sure. I know this guy, so he, he was in paramilitary. So he was on the other side of the barricades before it, it is, I'm telling you this happened before 26th January. So every day he used to come towards the farmer's side. I, I asked him the question. He said, my father is protesting here. While he, he used to be on duty, for the government, while his father used to be protesting against the three farm laws, that was very interesting to see. I could, I wanted to show his story, but I, then I thought, man, man, is a matter of privacy, and that's why I can't do this. But it happened. And and so now, unfortunately, he's probably still on duty, but now he cannot sort of go across and maybe talk to his father, maybe you know, quickly have you know tea with him. And so so that that sort of tension that is now created, right? It's having an impact even today. I know you uh, from your tweets, you're mentioning now very aggressively. Uh, security forces are blocking certain roads. They're blocking some people from coming from different parts of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh to join. Uh, protesters, can you talk a little bit about how that is happening? Like that sort of aggressive posture by security forces that is happening now. So they have not only blocked the roads; now they have started blocking the streets, the, the little gullies. We we say in Punjabi, gullies are shooting, shooting. We banned it. Now they have started blocking the streets. Three or four days ago, we were in, we were at close to Singhu at Shri Ram Colony in Narela. So they, they blocked a small street. They parked a truck. And then they brought their buses and the three to four paramilitary bus buses of paramilitary personals. They came there and they, st they started stopping people. So you can't go towards this side. And they had to install the truck. So today, a two to 300 tractor trolleys of Kisan Majdhur Sangharsh committee had arrived at Singhu border. They wanted to go towards Singhu border. So because a, because <coughs> a new group had come. So, but uh, they were stopped. They were stopped. So then, uh, Kisan Mizdur Sangarsh Committee's main leader, Sarban Singh Pandir, went to negotiate with the policemen. I don't know whether they were allowed or not. I, I have not checked the update, but they were stopped. Yeah. And so, yeah, and unfortunately, so that's you know, what they are doing. Yeah, no, and we're, we're seeing that. I mean, from your reporting and some of the other uh, independent journalists and media outlets, they're reporting this that there is a lot of aggressive sort of posturing that is happening on part of the government. Let me, I want to ask you a few of the questions and I'm going to come back to this question of sort of the security forces and sort of the aggressive response from the Indian government. I have been following your feed, many other people's feeds. One of the things that I noticed that really stood out to me is I've seen a lot of men, young and old, cooking, cleaning, uh, doing things that I... I am not sure if they do these things when they're back home at, you know, in Punjab. Have you spoken to some of these farmers and asked them, you know, to see Ithiran Ake, you know, you're, you're cooking, you know, you're, you're making food every day, you're feeding everybody else. How are, you know, it's a little bit of a change in roles. Have you, have you sort of had conversations with them about, hey, you know, to see Ake, you're coming here far away from home and you're cooking and cleaning? Yeah, when the protest started on 26th of November, 27th of November at Delhi's border, on 28th or 29th or 13th, I was a little bit shocked. I was like, oh man. And many people are saying, oh, men can't cook, men can't wash clothes. They can't do this or they can't do that. This is all the thing only women can do. But mm -hmm. men were doing. They were chopping off onions. They were making round rotis. They were cooking dal. They were preparing tea and serving it to others. They were washing utensils. So I talked to them and they were like, oh, we just came here and we learned everything. I'm like, oh man, this protest, uh, this protest has ended a petty ass to some extent. And we say, we usually say, well, the women say, oh, Indian Punjabi men are pray too much petty ass, they don't help us in kitchen, this or that. But I've even seen the Haryanvi Taos. Like Indian media, they usually blame Punjabis, especially Haryanvis. They usually target Haryanvis. Oh, these men are petty ass, 
they they don't do anything they just sit there and while their wives do all the work and they don't even let their wives come out of their homes they they are forced to do this ghongat but i usually see haryanvi women without ghongat they come to protest site and they roll raise anti modi slogans anti new form law slogans and this is very interesting thing to see and i think is this protest has transformed our society to some extent yeah so that's what i was going to ask you you know because i see these images and i am sitting here in new york but i my family comes from from farming communities and i'm just amazed to see this so today you had a tweet about um it was on a big mazdoor kisan uh, rally in barnala in punjab and it's women you know you mentioned that it's women who are you could just far away you could just see a lot of women and i've seen many photos of women young and old you know women are grandparents age uh, young girls i see a lot of women who are part of this movement can you talk a little bit about like how, how what role they have in this movement are they playing a leadership role as well i mean i haven't really seen women leaders but what role are women playing in this movement and to be honest still now we have not even a single farm leader who is leading any farm union all the farm leaders all of them are men and i don't want to go into details of caste yeah and that would be, become a much more problematic some people would start saying that oh man you are bringing a caste question into this you just want to divide the people but we just need to accept some realities like most of the land in india and even in the entire world most of the assets economic assets they are owned by men yes i'm a man too i don't want to speak on behalf of women they should i we would let them to speak speak so but yeah not even a single woman is a farm leader but th- there is a woman in bku ugrahas core committee her name is harinder bindu so matlab she does lot of work she she is at protest site and she had she had she has 40 year old son but she spent around two more than two months for testing at tigri border today she was at barnala rally yeah well women are doing what they can do what they are being allowed to do so i think there should be more participation of women that's what i would say yeah i mean i i mean you know thank you for sharing that and i know that's a whole different conversation we'll have another day uh but yes it does feel like there are some doors that are opening that there might be a cultural shift as you said maybe you know patriarchy will eventually change to a certain extent and so that's good to see but yes we have long ways to go but it's good to see that women are you know they are taking a very active role so i you know one thing sandeep i wanted to ask you is i work you know with united six i've been spending some of my time here in in new york we're supporting a lot of our teams on the ground that are providing a lot of support to uh farmers and anybody else who's there uh medical support water support winter clothing and now we're getting going into summer i have seen i know there's a lot of medical challenges we have medical camps uh farmers with foot injuries uh medical checkups blood pressure diabetes you know when you talk to farmers i hear a lot of videos han ji assi chardi chala kala chha gaye right we're in great spirits and you hear that but i also can imagine living outside on the roadside cold weather um it's not easy look i we live comfortably we you know we're coming we're sitting in our homes it's not easy talk a little bit about what are some of the stresses that farmers are going through living for months and weeks in the conditions they're living in so i don't think that they are feeling any stress i don't think they face any problem like i do live with them right now i'm in punjab because i need to go for some rallies here but most of my time i spend at singhu or sometimes i go to tikri or gazipur but but i, I don't think they, they face any problem yeah you have they have water they have everything they need yeah they are there are some difficulties but they are just having fun matlab punjabis and haryanvis most of them are from martial races they, they are martial race they belong to martial race and they don't get this at all is quite okay is easy like like if you most people are saying oh is is a winter or how farmers will manage these are these are the same farmers who go to their fields to irrigate their land in middle of night in, in december nights so they, they don't give a, they don't care much about the winter they are living a very great life at borders and they they have a lot of people to socialize with they have a lot to learn 
there are so many people they can talk to they can meet a, a new person every day if they want to talk i think they are chilling but yeah i i, I don't know about the mental health that there's a serious issue you have young men there you have senior citizens there elders then <clears throat> you have a middle aged man and many of them are from far away from their families some have not even seen their families for months some some have rotation policy they go to the family if after a week or not or a fortnight but still i think mental issue is a serious problem and no, i i don't think like i had i had known that some organizations have have sent those <clears throat> mental health experts there but i don't know how the farmers are managing i would like to explore this topic i would like to discuss with the farmers what are they feeling but if, yeah i'm like is is it tough is it tough to be there yeah and i think there's a few things that i there's a few things that i've heard from you you know you're right farmers you know that they are very tough to begin with farming is not easy it's a very difficult profession most of us who have never done farming we don't know how difficult it is to feed the entire planet so i you know part of that is is they're very tough so they can somehow manage to live in the border of delhi because they're they're tough to begin with right they don't come from comfortable professions so they are tough now having you know you talked a little bit about mental health we know that is an issue i know our organization has had mental health specialists who've been talking to farmers and it's hard it's hard to talk about these things these things are taboo in india most people young men old men they don't and even women they don't want to talk about these things so that is an ongoing challenge and i think i would love for you to actually do some reporting on this if you get an opportunity i know it's not easy but if you can i think that'll be great i do have a question though they are supporters of farmers they are organizations in india that are providing some level of support can you you know you've seen i know you you know you mentioned you've seen united six booth in uh, in singu and you know some of the other border locations and there's khal said and many other organizations talk a little bit about some of the seva that is happening in uh, border locations look like you united six is doing great work khal said they are amazing then there are many other organizations too the most of them are supported by our nri brothers and the farmers thank them every day like they thank them every day because they know that it, it, only because of the nris we are here with the support which is coming from the nris the financial support the even the political support the kind of support the people who are protesting in western countries in in entire world where wherever punjabis are they are going and protesting outside embassies or they are taking out these car rallies they are doing whatever they can so yeah and there there are so many services which are being provided by the the gurdwaras in in punjab we have many gurdwaras not only in punjab even in haryana even from hajur side this side of a langar at singhu and they are serving people and apart from this in villages we have in punjab's villages we have a very strong community system in every village more in most villages people have formed committees to help the poor to help the needy and to fund if if someone is ill and they can't afford a, a, a hospital fees so these people hold hospital charges they pay those things they even help people build their homes so now those committees the system which we set the punjabi set up with set up within last 4 to 5 years that system is now came to rescue of the farmers who are protesting at delhi's borders now they are using that system which was built in last 4 to 5 years to help the farmers and and i have reports not even a single journalist have done a report on this issue that this year many many in many villages the sports tournaments have been cancelled as those sports committees they have decided and they think that it is not a good decision to host a tournament to spend a money on sports tournament when farmers are protesting at delhi's borders they are demanding their rights they need the sport now they have cancelled those sports sports competition now they are using that money to support the farmers so i know many sports clubs who have cancelled their tournaments the annual functions so that's what the punjabis are doing the diaspora is doing to help the farmers 
Yeah, I mean, so I, I actually did not know that. And I think that's the part of the story because what happens is it seemed like sometimes Indian media reports on, as you mentioned, NRIs are sending in money or they're supporting, you know, peaceful rallies across the globe. And somehow they're putting a spin on it. Oh, it's foreign money coming in. But a lot of these NRIs, they they, are, they have gone from India. They're, they're, they still have families in India. They send money regardless of these protests or not. They send money to India. They are investing in India. They yeah, yeah, yeah. I had I was talking to this farmer. I said, "Oh, who is sending you money?" He said, "Our brothers." I was talking to a farm leader. He was like, "Our brothers, our sisters, our sons, our daughters. They are they are outside India. They are in abroad. So they are sending us money. They they are helping us out. So this is a normal thing. Even when this protest was not happening, the NRIs, the diaspora, used to send money to Punjab to to support the peoples who are in need. They used to." pay for some people's college fees, for sports tournaments, and to some people who needed medical expenses. They used to support those people. They even used to help people build homes and to start a business. And they used to do those things. But at that time, no one noticed because no one was challenging the government. Now the farmers are challenging the government. Now the media is labeling diaspora as, oh, these people are sending us them funding or this or that. Yeah, I don't take them seriously. Really. Yeah, I mean, but you know, it, no, it is interesting that uh, NRIs have invested a lot of their money back at what they consider home, and it's unfortunate that you know it, the narrative is being spun into oh, you know, Baro Pasiar and they're sending money, but they they are of course they're supporting not only farmers but really India and and, and at large. One question I had is uh, Sandeep. So most of these border locations are in Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. What are some of the locals who live right next to the farmers, right? In Singur, Tikri, Ghazipur. Uh, what, are, what do they think of the farmers who are there for this many months? What is their viewpoint? They love the farmers. They support them. I have seen the people who have opened their homes, the farmers, they said, oh, you can come and you can live here. But farmers have their tents, they have their tractors and trolleys, and they have everything. But if, if some farmers who want to take baths and sometimes they go to the homes of people who are living alongside the National Highway 44 at Singhu. So yeah, the locals have a very positive attitude towards the farmers. They know that these people have not harmed us till today. They have not even, the farmers have not broken even a single street light till now. I have given this example many times. So they are non-violent people. Yeah, they had broken the barricades, but you can't consider broke, breaking a barricade can't be considered a violence. Because you installed the barricades, they wanted to march, they broke on that barricade. That can't be considered a violence. Yeah, no, it is amazing how amazingly peaceful they have been given the fact that yeah. how many thousands of farmers are coming and supporters are coming in. The one question I, you know, this is now really big in the news. We've had journalists who've been arrested, we've had labor rights activists who've been arrested before even 26th of January, Republic Day, even after that, many are now behind bars. Some have not even seen their families. We know the case of Nodeep Kaur, her Shiv Kumar, who was arrested and both of them were arrested in January. And there's a few others, uh, a fellow independent journalist of yours, Mandeep Punia was uh, arrested, <coughs> he was released. How are, have you, talk a little bit about that sort of posturing and aggressive nature by the Indian government and were you impacted? How are you managing uh, with all of this uh, aggression that is coming from the Indian state? So like they picked up Nodi because she was protesting outside a factory because some laborers were unpaid. So she was demanding that these that laborers should be paid and Shiv Kumar, he had Majdur uh, Adhikar Sangat the two was picked up and they filed some case against them. Then Mandi Punia, the two was picked up. You know, he's out on jail, out of jail on bail. Yeah, he's again reporting from the ground. Yeah, I'm look, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not afraid of the police, to be honest. I don't take them much seriously. I know that they will pick up people. They do these things randomly. They have picked up some students and they have been put behind bars and booked under UAPA, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, terrorism charges. So these things happen in India. These things are quite normal. I'm not afraid. I, 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 I'm not afraid. Yeah, but, but sometimes I get like, oh man, 
मतलब दे मे पिक अप मी व्हेन आई एम ट्रैवलिंग टू दिल्ली और कमिंग बैक फ्रॉम दिल्ली एट लीस्ट इफ दे वांट टू पिक मी अप एट लीस्ट माय फैमिली और माय फ्रेंड्स शुड गेट टू नो दैट आई एम बीइंग पिक आई हैव बीन पिक्ड अप आई एम यू नेवर नो देयर हैव बीन रिपोर्ट्स व्हेन पीपल डिसअपियर्ड इन इंडिया देयर फैमिलीज नेवर गेट टू नो वेयर दे वेंट सो आई डोंट वांट दैट थिंग टू हैपन बट आई इफ दे वांट टू पिक दे विल पिक आई एम नॉट अफ्रेड ऑफ दैट थिंग बीइंग पिक्ड अप बाय पुलिस Well I I wish you well I hope you stay safe. Um the question that I have you know you've been reporting now for almost 3 months. You've been in 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 Delhi and you know traveling back and forth to different locations. Is there anything that has surprised you like you just did not expect and you're like wow this is amazing. Or just something that just you just you're like wait a minute. Really? I mean this is for good or bad? so i would say there are many things first of all it has been 3 months so so last night so when i was coming from delhi to punjab so i saw that still there is 8 to 9 km convoy of tractor and trolleys on national highway 44 as the genius like the most journalists they usually come to singhu and they see 1 to 2 km then they go back i ever but i was so that This is a seven to eight kilometer long convoy of tractor and trolleys, and they are still there. Most of them don't go to the stage; they don't go to the stage to listen to the speakers, but they stay in their area. They just stay close to their trolleys, but they are still there. It has been three months, and they are not tired. I am surprised. Apart from this, the another thing which I have seen is the creativity. People are so creative. After twenty six January incident, most people, I would, most of I said this opinion that farmers are tired, have got have are tired. They will not be do to able do much. So few days ago, another school for for elders came up. The elders who can't read, oh, they are being taught to read. They are calling it a beda, you know beda, but it is called in Punjabi is is a beda. So now they are teaching. the elders how to write how to read so then this guy there was a building which was in ruins it was completely in shambles on national highway 44 so this man came went there a farmer he cleaned that he renovated that he painted that now he has brought he he brought a he brought some furniture man the man a mason to fix those walls and now he then he brought an electrician electrician now he has painted that room he has renovated it and he he is planning to live there it was in complete shambles completely in shambles and now he plans to live there and he even brought his family there at singhu water from husharpur now he said he will put his put his school kids into a school at singhu close to singhu so now he wants to admit his school kids into a school close to singhu that's amazing thing and i don't know like and as summer is coming the farmers had their tents on road or at a petrol pump now they took those tents under the shadow of trees hmm. they said it, it will be cold there they they would be able to live there without caring much about the heat or sunlight i mean like, those things are amazing the punjabis and haryanavis they are so much creative they are so much jugadu you may have heard this song named jugadi jat yeah but they, they are jugadu i would not name the caste but they are jugadu people yeah and i think that the word you use which is very interesting is you know we we see farmers we say okay they're very hard working but the word creative usually does not get used when we talk about farmers and even sometimes you know when we talk about mazdoors but they are creative you know we we call them in english street smart right they're street smart they know how to get things done despite difficult circumstances and yes i've seen images of libraries of schools not only for farmers kids but even mazdoors kids poor kids in the neighborhood who are coming to get langar they're educating them as well and i'm just i'm amazed you know here you are in this andolan you're protesting things are not easy necessarily you're far from home but you're serving food you're educating people you're educating yourself your bazurg and other kids i mean i think that's the part of the story that is not getting told and which is sort of counter to how people perceive punjabis and haryanvis right they're loud they love music which they do but they also do things that make them the kind of hospitable 
Indians and human beings that they are, that they welcome you and they will feed you, they will educate you and they'll serve you. Those are things, you know, we're not seeing a lot of times from the mainstream media and even the government acknowledge that, hey, you know what? These are hardworking people. They disagree with us right now, but they are part of the family. So I, I wanna, social media is one of the biggest tools in this whole andolan. Both sides have used it for good and bad, right? They're trying to get their story, maybe their propaganda out. You are sharing everything you're reporting through Twitter. That's your, you know, a, a tool of choice. Talk a little bit about, you know, would you have been able to do this if, uh, if uh, social media did not exist? No, not at all. Social media, it has provided me a level playing field, I think. So I was not, I, I don't work for any news organization. Till today, I have not done any job, any. So I'm a completely an unemployed person. So yeah, I, I saw things, I saw stories. I started putting them on Twitter. Some of them went viral. And now most news organizations, they follow me. Sometimes they embed my tweets on their websites while they, they want to report. So yeah, do those things help me too because we, the, their audience see my, my tweets and they start following me and they need those videos visible sometimes. <clears throat> they get those things coming. It's a completely win-win situation. Yeah, but social media is a great tool, especially Twitter. And if you go on Facebook, they have so much censorship. And Facebook is a mass. Like, but if, if your Twitter is you go viral easily. It's not about going viral, but it's about that your message, it reaches a lot of audience within a limited span of time. Yeah, Facebook has you... very restrictive policies. If someone reports them, they, they start limiting your reach. They, they have a very shitty system, but Twitter is much better than Facebook. Well, uh, you know, thank you for reporting. I mean, you know, we, we have, I mean, Twitter is where we've seen a lot of activity from, again, both sides. Uh, a lot of news and, and support as well. We know in the US, since the tweet from Rihanna and many other celebrities and uh, other icons, you know, this has become sort of like now a global movement in many ways. I, I do wanna ask you about your Twitter profile. You have on your profile, a quote from Chaudhary Sar Choturam. Now I'm actually learning more about him. I didn't know much about him until recently. He lived in, during the time of British Raj, he was from Punjab. He was a farmer turned lawyer at the time. He started a party called Zamindarandi party, you know, landowners party. And vast majority of Zamindars at the time, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, they joined this party. Interestingly, to highlight his contributions towards uh, bringing out reforms, revolutionary reforms in Punjab uh, during British Raj, Prime Minister Narendra Modi unveiled his statue <coughs> in Rota Haryana in October, 2018. Talk, so, so, you know, you seem like, you know, you, you find inspiration from Chaudhary Sir Choturam. Talk a little bit about his contributions towards farmers and India's farmers movement and how it is connected today. How is he relevant today to us? So Shotu Ram, he had founded this Zimidara party, Zimidara party, Zimidara party in 1923. So he, he talked mainly on economic basis. He did not talk, he did not try to divide people on religion. He tried to raise the question of economic basis. So he was a threat to all of these people. So he had played a huge role in farming and for, for the betterment of farming community. So that's why he's important. And he was, you know, I want to emphasize for that reason, he was recognized by the state of Haryana and India's prime minister that, you know, this is somebody from our British Raj history. Of course, yeah. Now, you know, they might, they don't want to stand by the calls of justice from farmers. But if, if Chaudhary Chotu Ram was here to Rasar Chotu Ram, he would be part of the Andolan. He would be one of the leaders. Yeah, he would have been. Yeah, B, BJP knows. They, they only do the politics of symbolism. Okay. So like Narendra Modi says that he's the biggest follower of Mahatma Gandhi. He, he, show, he tries to show that he's the biggest follower of B.R. Ambedkar. He only worship them. He does not follow them. That's not a, but he is good at following other people and respecting their 
opinions or trying to follow their path. But all he is good at showing things is he just does whatever he thinks he wants to do. But he will worship people who have done something great, who are considered great. So even people from his party they follow Sabarkar. So even some even follow. I would not say his party members, but people who have sympathy for his party, they even respect this Gond Seji. I would not say G, but that guy had killed Gandhi. I don't want to go into that. Well, they are great at doing this politics of symbolism. So, you know, Sandeep, we're getting I getting close to sort of our conversation here. I want to ask you this one thing. It seems like right now most people in India. I'm going to focus on India right now because this is you know something that's going to have a huge impact on India and certainly the globe as well. But really, India. A lot of people have made up their mind. Right, they're either for the farmers or they're against the farmers, and there's a lot of horrible things that have been said about farmers. I mean, anti-national militants, terrorists, really horrible things. If you could say something to these people who are like, "Look, I, I don't like farmers. I don't agree with them," not to change their mind, but just to give them a perspective of from the farmer side, what would you say? I would say go and visit. any protest site go and talk to the farmers don't take anything in your mind shut down your tv switch off your phone go and just sit close to the farmers and just go and talk to them just hear what do they have to say they will tell you what is the problem and if you want to do more you can go and read these three farm laws and just go and check what has happened to the countries to the farmers in countries those who have opened their agriculture sector for private companies and see what is happening to them and most of these people talk about that free market let everything let market decide what happens who survives and who crashes it should be let let market decide but you will see that in some some western countries where you see that market decides what happens the government supports farmers a lot this support a lot in india if we don't support our farmers that much and if you see subsidies in us the farmers got a lot of subsidy in india the farmers don't get that much subsidies so there there is a huge difference in being a free market and apart from this us is a developed country in india in in the us if you work as a laborer you can live a good life in india if you work as a laborer you are you will not be able to survive mm-hmm. because the money is so much limited we can we are not equal to us they have this capitalist economy they are developed country but we should not try to copy them if we want to copy them but first of all we need to for why such a labor market where even if, if someone goes to work as a laborer they should be live able to live a good life but in india people get so little money while working as a laborer compared to us in in us if people someone drives a truck they are leading a very great good life in india those things don't work last question i want to ask you sandeep um what can we i mean i'm in new york many people who are listening to us are in us canada uk india all over the world even in india many of us are far away from these uh, farmer andolan morcha locations what can we do to be good global citizens right it's not just saying well i'm taking this side or that side but what can we do to be productive to be constructive so i think you guys are already doing enough if i tell you something that do this or that i may get bogged disha ravi has already been picked up they are saying that there was some conspiracy she was in touch with poetic justice foundation and they had met before 26 january as well as they are they don't even have evidence so our asj additional solicitor general his name is some uh, some raju so he was like conspiracy you don't see the conspiracy you just need to see you don't even have a, they don't even have a proof of conspiracy but he said this is a conspiracy 
so i would not say anything but you should do you or you know what you need to do tomorrow i they will come after me no i i i want you to stay safe thank you for everything that you're doing maybe as a last parting thought maybe share like a story with us just leave, so you know we leave everybody with kind of like an inspiring story as a conclusion to this uh, amazing conversation thank you but yeah share like is there a story you want to share kind of leave everybody with hey this is something i saw or did um that keeps us inspired so i see that people they are coming to the singo if someone have a tractor they come on tractor someone have a car they come on car some even drive their bicycles they pedal their cycles to come to singo they just come and they live there then they go back and th- that sort of spirit that's keeping these farm protests alive so now i there are many people who try to after 26 january tractor rally many people who were, went especially for the rally they came back now they are passing some resolution in villages that they should go back that more farmers should go and join the protest so even you see 70 to 80 year old auntie so few days ago i met this this elder she was around more than 80 years old she said she was 8 year old when india got independence now she is protesting at singo border she said i will spend at least a week here she came she was there for third or fourth time so these people are like they are amazing you will see you will see the spirit when you listen to them you will laugh and then you will get motivated oh man these people are not ready to give up well i think the the one thing that i'm hearing from you then i think i'm going to sort of leave that as a final thought is that the one thing we can do is you know keep telling our stories tell farmer stories and you're doing that right you are there on the ground with farmers telling their side of the story how they're living what they're doing and that's the best thing i think all of us can do anywhere around the globe is tell our stories you know get that out there if somebody is calling you you know gaaliyan de rahe calling you bad things the best way perhaps to respond is what our farmers are doing you serve you serve food you educate do the right thing tell your stories and in some ways you know sandeep you're a storyteller you you know you you come from farming background but here you are as a journalist independent journalist you're telling stories you're telling stories of farmers and mazdoors who are fighting for basic livelihood economic rights and for that you know i i thank you for doing what you're doing stay safe thank you for your journalistic seva i wish you well thanks for taking time and talking to us here in uh, around the globe on the united six platform thanks vishwi thanks thanks it was nice to talk to you same here thanks take care you are amazing ji take care sasri gal ji bhai gurji ka khalsa bhai gurji ki fateh ji